Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my July show and tell. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. This is a video I like to make every month where I literally show and tell about all the things that I feel like showing and telling about. So sometimes this is like favorites, tarot, oracle. I usually talk about some makeup, some random stuff, some life stuff, some memories, you know, that kind of thing. But in general here on the channel, I like to talk about a lot of things tarot and tarot adjacent. So if that is your jam, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and hang out with us here. But for now, let's get into it. I like to start off with memories, and there are so many from July. For starters, July was my birthday month. I turned 45. It feels weird. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, it just feels weird. I don't know how else to describe it. I definitely don't feel like I'm 45. I feel like I'm like, I don't know. I, 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 it's, it's weird. It's weird. That's all I'm going to say. But I did get to do a few fun things for my birthday. Uh, Peggy took me out for a wonderful afternoon tea, which it's like the fancy tea where you sit down and you have the pot of tea, you have the little tiered trays. They often call it high tea, but I've been educated on multiple occasions that in the UK, a high tea is more meal light. Well, I guess more like heavy things. Like, I don't know. Don't ask me. I'm not an expert on tea, but they call it high tea. Anyways, lots of delicious tiered tray things like uh, little mini sandwiches and scones and delightful. Th it, it's, it's an incredible experience. It's one of my favorite things to do ever. I drank so much tea and uh, the nibbles. We couldn't finish the food. It, it never looks that intimidating when it comes out because everything's so tiny, but you're drinking so much tea. <laughs> At least if you're me, you're drinking so much tea and then you're nibbling on the things. But I, I will try to remember to pop up a couple of photos while I'm chit chatting about this of the tea setup. It's a place in Vancouver called the Secret Garden Tea Company, and it is, it's probably my favorite place we've gone, although we've been several places for high tea or afternoon tea, because it's my favorite thing. So that, we did that on my birthday, and we also dropped Rose off for her surgery, which is amazing. It went well, and everything is good. She's healing up now, so that's awesome. And before my birthday, like the weekend before my birthday, we also, or the week before my birthday, I think, we had a really nice steak dinner at the youngest, Steve's place. He made a steak and potatoes and salad and it was incredible. It was so good. And chicken. I feel like he just went way above and beyond. So that was super fun. It's always fun when we can get together with the kids, kids, adults, children, <laughs> adult people that we are parents of. <laughs> There's no correct term, but anyways, it's always nice when we get together with them. And that was a lot of fun. Other things, I had my 1000th video here on YouTube. And the, the, the really mind boggling thing about that, first of all, I think I've made a thousand videos is insane. But also to think that uh, that doesn't include all of my private videos, member videos, any of that. That's just the public videos on the channel. And video number 1000 timed out perfectly to be for a live stream where Peggy and I gave away, well, we gave away four total copies of the Alley Man Tarot. We gave away two here on YouTube, one for the Unicorn Fam channel members and one for the Facebook group, the Supportive Tarot Facebook group. That was a lot of fun to host that giveaway. All the prizes have been sent off to their homes, which is amazing. And also, Peggy and I joined the local community center pool, which has been bringing me so much joy. I can't even begin to tell you. I love being in the water and we've been going almost every single evening for at least an hour, hour and a half or so of swimming. And so I'm obsessed. I'm so happy. It was really affordable to sign up for a membership. The pool is great. There's been space every time we go and it's so close to home. It's like five minutes away. So we go, we swim, we shower, we come home and then I'm like all relaxed. It reminds me of way back in the day. You know, I don't know if you, well, I'm gonna date myself, but roller rinks, roller skating rinks were a thing. And when you left the roller skating rink, you were feeling kind of floaty because of all the time spent on wheels. Well, when you swim, I don't know why I had to use the roller skating rink example when it works for swimming. And anyways, when you swim, it's the same kind of thing. At least it is for me. After you swim for a while, you're kind of floaty for a bit after. And it has been the most heavenly thing to go from swimming in the evening to like winding down for bed and like laying in bed and reading a book and then drifting off to sleep. It has been incredible and it's really well timed because if you were here for my June show and tell, I talked a little bit, at least I think it was in my show and tell, I talked a little bit about being kind of on the cusp of feeling a little bit burnt out and needing to kind of make sure I'm balancing things properly and making enough time for self care. Yes, because I talked about it when I was talking about my nail polish, I'm pretty sure. Uh, in any case, it's been a really, really good thing to be able to prioritize that kind of time. Plus it's just Peggy and I, it's like time for the two of us without electronics, just to kind of hang out 
And while we're not like glued to each other at the pool, we're pretty much together at the pool. So that's been really nice. So those are the major standout memories from July. My thousandth video, my 45th birthday, Rose going in for her surgery, joining the pool for swimming, going to afternoon tea. Oh, and there's other birthday things, but I'll be chatting about those as I go through the rest of my show and tell. But with that said, let's get into YouTube favorites. My Probably my favorite thing all month, short of the things that I've been doing, because I always love the things that I'm doing, but short of that, my favorite thing all month has had, had to have been the hashtag good mood decks. I don't remember who started the tag, which is terrible of me, but I will link the original video down below. And if there's a playlist for all of the hashtag good mood decks, like VRs, uh, video responses, I will put that playlist link in the description box down below also. But it has been really enjoyable to watch that particular tag going around. It's just full of positive energy. Hearing people talk about the decks that put them in a good mood is just happy content to watch. It's the kind of thing I love consuming because it's just such a mood lifter and I just have been really enjoying it. I don't know if I'm gonna have a chance to make a VR to that one or not, but I definitely wanted to shout it out because it has been so much fun to watch. I have also really been enjoying this past month, a couple of people made a VR to a video I made a while back called Second Chance Decks. And I don't know that I actually ever thought about it being a, a tag or like thought about it in that way. But when people started doing like video responses to it, I got pretty excited because it's really fun to see. The Second Chance Decks video that I originally made was mostly meant to be more of a confession of decks that I either purgatoried and rescued or literally rehomed and repurchased later. And it was a lot of fun to do, but hearing what other people have done that with has been like oddly validating and also really fun. So uh, there was a really good one by Krista over at Crochet Witch Tarot and Don Michelle also did a VR as well. I would super be excited if more people wanted to do that because that's been fun to watch also. And of course, you guys know Three Fat Readers is always, always a favorite. I will always mention it here because I always have such an incredible and amazing time hanging out with my friends Danny and Dustin on that channel. The Three Fat Readers channel is a collab between myself, Dustin at Modern Metaphysicae, Danny, Danny Mystic. A lot of you guys know this already and I always have a link to it in the description box down below, but it's always, always a favorite. Also in July, some fun magic-y things. So for starters, I had a really lovely birthday reading by Kyra Getchell. I will link her website down below. She also gave me an astrology reading that I raved about in June and I believe she still has a sale on in her shop for 50% off her reading so check that out. Also my big birthday gift from Peggy in July, obviously my birthday was in July, my big birthday gift from Peggy was a new crystal. So I found this. Okay, okay, okay. I'm about to enthuse. I'm probably gonna babble for a minute. Here's the story. So I turned in some books so that I could get a credit at a local metaphysical store that I went and checked out that I hadn't had a chance to look at in any detail before. That metaphysical store is called Phoenix Rising uh, Emporium, I think it's called. I think that's the full name. I'll have a link to it down below. They're located a little further away from me than my closest store, which is Reflection Books, who I've talked about here on the channel before. Phoenix Rising is amazing. The people there are amazing. And I had a pretty sizable box of mass market decks and things that I was moving out of my like household <laughs> books, things like that to turn in. So I went and turned those in to them for store credit. And while I was there, uh, I was talking to them about decks and stuff. And it sort of, I was kind of browsing the shop to think about what I might want to pick up with my store credit. Anyway, I left there that day because it was near closing and I went home and I was looking at their website and they had a bunch of beautiful things, but something that I saw on their website, now I can't remember what it was, got me thinking about, I had seen before um, polished, carved crystals. Like, you know how you can get crystal skulls? Well, I've seen crystal unicorn heads, like shaped like unicorn heads. And I was like, wow, that'd be really cool to get one of those for my birthday, like month or whatever. And I don't have one. I have two crystal skulls, but I certainly don't have any of the unicorn shaped. I keep doing this. This is what I do. I talk with my hands. <laughs> but I was thinking it'd be really cool to get a unicorn head crystal, maybe like a labradorite or a rose quartz or something, fluorite. And so I, I started Googling unicorn head or unicorn crystals or something like that. And I quickly stumbled onto a link talking about a crystal, like a, what do you call it? Like I, I call them composite crystals. Have, have I talked about this already? I feel, I've, I've glided my friends about it. That's probably why it feels like I've said this already on the channel, but I haven't. Okay. Anyway, I call them composite crystals, but crystals that are made up of multiple minerals. So an example of this would be like the septarian nodule that has like fossilized mud, but it also has, I think it's yellow calcite um, in it or citrine or something. Anyway, it's multiple, you know, it's multiple things in one thing. <laughs> so I'm really bad at explaining this. I'm so sorry. Anyway, I stumbled on unicorn stone and I was like, I'm sorry, excuse me, what is unicorn stone? 
So it's fairly recently discovered. It sounds like it was found in Madagascar. I don't know a ton of the details. I definitely encourage you to do the research piece yourself. But when I saw a picture of one of these, I about lost my mind. I was like, I'm sorry, unicorn stone? And then I saw what it was made of, which when you see it, you'll understand because I have some here. <laughs> but that's the punchline. That's where we're headed with this story. In any case, it is made up of lapidolite, which is already the stone. If I was to pick a crystal or a stone out of my collection that felt the, more, the most unicorny other than my... Um, Aura treated quartz, other than Aura quartz, which has a very unicorny vibe to me. The crystal that I would associate most with unicorns from my collection would be Lapidolite. Well, unicorn stone is made up of Lapidolite, pink tourmaline, smoky quartz, and another crystal or mineral called Clevelandite, which has a light kind of milky appearance. Now the energies of these stones make so much sense to me for a stone you're gonna call unicorn stone and then you add the appearance piece into it and it all just is, it's chef's kiss. It was so exciting. So I totally went down the rabbit hole, started looking for sellers who might have unicorn stone pieces and I found two from the same seller because I'm a greedy girl and I could not help myself. And then I immediately messaged Peggy and was like, hi, do you wanna get these for me for my birthday? <laughs> And she's like, yes, dear. And so I now have two beautiful pieces of unicorn stone, one small, one large, and I'm about to show them to you. They are so exciting. Okay, anyway. And when you're shopping for crystals, I know you're like, show me the stone already. I'm getting there, I promise. But when you're shopping for crystals, you, you literally are shopping for the specific one if you're shopping online. Oftentimes you'll go to a vendor, at least this is what I recommend. A good vendor will have each piece labeled and you'll know which piece you're ordering and they'll have lots of pictures of angles so you, so you know. So I knew exactly what I was getting and I shopped and shopped and shopped until I found two pieces I really, really liked. So this is the first one. Hmm, okay, <laughs> I'm very excited. So this is unicorn stone and it is, so there's like a big batch. This is what I liked here is there's this like window of smoky quartz, stay focused please camera, in the bottom there. But that, so this part would be the Clevelandite and you can see some Lapidolite. And then we get into this side where you can really see more of the pink tourmaline, uh, tourmaline and Lapidolite. So this is a carved unicorn stone tower and I love it. Now in person, it also has a little bit of a shimmer because Lapidolite has that um, shimmery quality. I can't, I don't think it's technically a feldspar, it might be. I'm not great with technical details, but um, there is a glimmer and a shimmer as you shift this in the light, which is super exciting. And hello, is that not like the most unicorny combo combo of colors ever, I, ever? So the shop that had this also had this one. So this one's obviously my baby, but this one can be traveled with, do you see? So I've got like the mama and the baby. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, that's what happened. <gasps> It is gorgeous. So this one has tons. You can really see all, oh gosh, don't. We don't want glare and we do not want out of focus. I want you to be able to see everything. Oh, there's another window down in here. I love, there's a lot of times they have the smoky quartz is more obvious down near the bottom. So the white, the milky white that you see is the Clevelandite. The dark purple is the Lapidolite. The flashes of pink are pink tourmaline. And then of course you can see that's the smoky quartz there at the bottom. That's what the bottom looks like. This is a chonker. And actually this is, I think this is bigger than my other, I have another tower like this that is made up of um, ruby in tourmaline. Nope, ruby and kyanite. I always forget that, ruby and kyanite. This is bigger than that. And it is, this is the perfect size <laughs> unicorn sto stone. I freaking love it. It's got this really wide face on that side and then it's got smaller faces. So it's got kind of a, an asymmetrical look. I like that it has this big wide face on that side. Um, and of course, again, this is carved. I don't, I'm pretty sure this is not a natural shape at all. Not pretty sure. I know this is not a natural shape, but it's beautifully carved. And this one had just the best mix of minerals. I love the, the chunks of smoky quartz. It's got a lot of glimmer and shimmer in this piece. I mean, between the two, this one is arguably much more pretty, but I liked that this, you could still see all of the different minerals. So sometimes when you're looking at the unicorn stone, you'll find pieces that look, I also found some sellers that were calling it unicorn stone when it was clearly just Lapidolite and pink tourmaline or just Lapidolite and smoky quartz. So you have to be careful. It should have all four in them to be in it. So it should have the Clevelandite, which is the white milky, should have the dark purple Lapidolite, should have the pink tourmaline and should have the smoky quartz. So I wanted pieces that showed all of those minerals in them. These are my new babies. I am so excited. This is like my soul stone, you guys. It's like, I know I sound like a cheesy five-year-old. Wait, a cheesy grown-up who's also five. I don't know. I sound like a big kid, 
because I am, but I'm very, very excited to have found this. And it's not just because it's called Unicorn. Also, it has the energy of really, really incredible stones that I already know really well and I'm comfy with. Clevelandite is the new one to me, but, 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 but it's so exciting and I love them so much. Okay, so anyways, that's, that's that. That's in the magic category. And then I had to figure out what the heck to spend my store credit on. Uh, so at Phoenix Rising, they ended up having a candle sale on my birthday exactly. So I went back out there. I, Peggy was taking a nap because Rose's surgery was very early in the morning. So Peggy napped. I did not nap. I went down to Phoenix Rising to shop their candle sale. They were specifically having a sale on these gorgeous candles. These are by Clove and Quartz. I'm assuming this is gonna be a local creator. I don't know a lot. But I had fallen in love with these jar candles when I was at the shop the first time. This one specifically is the one that I fell in love with and the scent is called Grimoire. And it is sage, sea salt, cedar wood, and, and it's got obsidian in the candle. <laughs> the smell though, it's a wood wick candle. So that's what the inside looks like. Gorgeous, right? So they were having a buy one, get one free on these honking um, jar candles which was really freaking exciting. So I bought two of the Grimoire scent because this is the one that I fell in love with and they still had exactly two left. And I was like, well, I'm clearly gonna get two for the price of one on these bad boys. So I bought that for my birthday. <laughs> and then I splurged on one of these gorgeous um, Circle of Magic candles. There was another one they had that was a Dragon's Blood. I'm kind of happy I ended up with this one. This one smells really freaking good. This literally smells like everything witchy. So this is called Witch's Brew. And this is what the candles. Now, if I can find a link to these, I will link them for you down below. But this is a really gorgeous, and this has frankincense, myrrh, and mugwort. So it smells really, really witchy. So this is gonna be my magical working candle. This one, these ones I'm just gonna enjoy, like probably on my reading table, because you guys know how I roll. I usually have one of these kinds of candles out, or I have a shorter pillar candle out. So that's gonna keep me in delightful, yummy, candly goodness for quite a long time, but I'm very excited, I'm very excited. And I paid for these with my store credit, which was even better, because who doesn't love a bargain? It is that time where I'm going to talk about body and beauty, AKA usually makeup and nail polish. So remember, if you're like, look lady, I am not here to listen to you talk about makeup. There are other YouTube channels for that. That's fine, go ahead and skip ahead. This is one of my favorite segments. So I'm gonna get right into it. Uh, I have, yay, three different polishes, I guess, of a sort to show you guys today. Um, I got tons and tons of comments when I wore this one. This is Zoya Saint. So yay, I did make time to paint my nails or do something with my nails every single weekend this month, which is good. I know I talked about that being a goal last month because it is a self-care ritual. I love doing it. I always love the way my nails look when I put this polish on. It is like periwinkle, but it has a pink flash. And I feel like I've already talked about it. Did I also wear it in June? I can't remember now, but this is what it looks like. I've definitely talked about it on the channel a bunch. I actually don't have a humongous nail polish collection, but because I do get comments on my nail polish, I do really enjoy sharing which ones I've been enjoying in the month. If this ever gets boring for y'all, just tell me. I will maybe stop. <laughs> Maybe, I probably have to get a lot of complaints to be honest because I'm stubborn and I just like doing what I'm doing here. I like doing what I'm doing, yeah, because I can talk. Uh, but anyway, I really like this polish. And then I made the prettiest manicure ever and it lasted eight hours, not because of the polishes, but because I went swimming and I was careless and I wrecked it and I was so sad and I wore it as, like I let it get really janky like on my fingernails because it was so, so, so pretty and I worked hard on it. So even though it was wrecked on the first day, I still enjoyed the crap out of it. I don't know if you guys ever have that experience. I'm definitely gonna do this combo again because it was so pretty. Um, I have a couple of Essie polishes. Now I have not repurchased or purchased any more Essie polishes in quite some time, but I do have a few in my collection. They are owned by a parent company that is not cruelty free and I do prefer to try to buy things that are cruelty free as much as possible, but I'm also gonna not throw out the stuff that I have. So um, I really like this line by Essie, um, Treat, Love and Color. And by the way, those of you in the know, because I'm not always in the loop, there are a lot of companies lately that have gone cruelty free and I'm not always in the loop. If you ever find out that Essie has gone cruelty free, please tell me. Same goes for OPI. I'm pretty sure they're not technically cruelty free. No, pretty sure they're not. Um, so these are both technically things I would probably not buy right now. But anyways, I do really like Essie polishes. So if they ever went cruelty free, I'd probably buy more, but I do love Zoya. They're still my favorite brand. That's this one here. And these guys are cruelty free. Uh, anyways. This is a line they have called Treat, Love, and Color. So it's a little bit nourishing. It's got a strengthener and fortifier 
for your nails in it. So when I wanna give my nails a break, I have a couple of these. I have like two from Essie and I have one from OPI that I've had in my collection for a bit. And in both cases, or in any case where I wanna kinda of give my nails a breather, I will usually put one of these on and they, I got them in neutralish colors. Anyway, this one is in the color, that was a long ramble, you guys, I'm sorry. This one is in the shade Mauve, Mauvetivation. The puns in makeup are just, they're something. Anyway, this is what the color looks like. Um, so again, it's Treat Love and Color, and it's this really pretty mauve pink. I would say it's more pink than mauve, but it does have that kind of cooler undertone to it. Really, really, really pretty. So I put this on, two coats of this on my nails, after I put my base coat, and then I have this. Now, I got this back when the Hello Kitty collection released by OPI, because... I didn't, the colors were so boring, let's be honest. So the Hello Kitty collection comes out, it's exactly the colors you would expect. It's a true red, it's a it's a pink, and it's this Hello Kitty white. I don't, I don't think there was anything else in the collection, but this Hello Kitty white, so I don't know if you can still get this. If you can, I will link it. Um, but this Hello Kitty white is a really, really fine white shimmer. Um, it's really, really pretty. And you know what's dumb about this too? The, the Hello Kitty piece, it's just like a a cap cover. It's not even like, like I could peel it off, so dumb. Like it's, it, this is totally marketing. This is me being hyped up about marketing and I'll tell you what, I've done this a bunch of times with makeup and usually regret it where like I buy it because it's like fandom that I like, like Hello Kitty or whatever. And then I get it and I'm like, yeah, but I don't really like the makeup that much. Like I had some little Hello Kitty color pops that I'm sure I've talked about on the channel. Ultimately they didn't end up staying in my collection because I just never reached for them, but they were Hello Kitty so I bought them. Like I need to not be a sucker like that, but, but this turned out to be a really good buy because this layered over top of other colors turns them into this shimmery, metallic-y beautifulness. And this color, this Hello Kitty white over top of this mauve pink, stunning. So I recorded some videos, a couple of which are coming out next month, I'm pretty sure. Um, wait, I actually recorded a couple of videos with this combo on my nails. I can't remember when those videos are coming out. So... You will have seen it already or you will be seeing this polish. I don't remember the order, but it's really pretty. And I, I know I recorded at least three videos, I think, at least three videos with me wearing this combo because it was really pretty and I wanted to make the most of it. And that was before I wrecked it in the pool. So I still got some mileage out of that combo. So fun. And you may also know that I have been challenging myself to try to work with just a single eyeshadow palette for an entire month. I don't know how I'm gonna do with that this month because I'm wearing the look that I can get out of the palette for August and well I may get bored because it's pretty it's a pretty eyeshadow look I like what I'm wearing now but like anyways that's next month's show and tell's problem in July the palette that I was working with all month was another Pat McGrath this was the holiday release for 2021 20, I think I'm pretty sure. Um, this is actually a really fun palette to play with because it's got a ton of fun colors. I if you, if you saw me wearing eyeshadow in July this is what I was wearing and it's really pretty. Look at all the look at all the colors. Let me see if I can get myself out of it so it'll focus. Oh, you can see my camera and the reflection. See, camera, hello. Uh, anyway, it's really, really gorgeous. There's this gorgeous metallic green up here. Um, there's a peach, there's blues. I feel like there's just, there's a lot to play with. So this is a fun palette, but there are only a couple of mattes, mind you. So there's two pinkish mattes, one a little more cool toned, one slightly warmer toned, and then there's a light brown and a dark brown. Like in essence, that's all I really need for mattes. I wish it had a, um, like a cream or a bone color, which I know is so boring, but like I use those colors all the time for blending. Um, and a slightly lighter matte would have been nice because sometimes these darker ones, like I have to, because Pat McGrath's eyeshadows are so pigmented, the medium or lighter toned colors tend to be still a little too dark. Like I have to blend and blend and blend to get them lighter on my skin. Um, but this is a lot of fun to play with. I would say if, I mean, for the amount of eyeshadow you get, I feel like it's a really, it was a really good buy. I don't think you can still get this. If you can, I'll link it, but it was a holiday release. So I'm guessing you can't. So, but anyways, it was fun to play with. So that's what I played with in July. Food, food. Okay, there, I don't have a lot to report. I talked about the delicious steak dinner and the amazing afternoon tea, but I will tell you the one food item specifically, I guess that's a product that I can show you. Oop, I tried to throw it. The product, the food product I want to share with you as a favorite, and I don't think you can get this anywhere. So this is just a big tease, but it is the tea that I drink when I go to the Secret Garden Tea Company for afternoon tea. This tea is incredible. I don't entirely know. It's some kind of vanilla fruit 
black tea of some kind, but it, they call it the secret garden secret tea. Like literally that's what it's called. And I, you get 40 tea bags in when you take it home with you. So of course I, I grabbed a bag when we were there because this will last me a long, long time because I drink tea, but not often, often. So I, this is tea. So I'm going to make myself a tea this afternoon because this smells so good. And it just takes me right back to having tea at the tea secret garden tea place. But it's, it's really yummy. And I had to talk about it. If I can find it online, I will link it, but I don't think I can. Okay, anyways, moving on. I wanna talk about books so that I can talk about TV. So I'm gonna do these as a duo, I guess. I finally finished the All Souls trilogy, which is A Discovery of Witches. Uh, I forget the name of the middle book. Shadow of Night, I think it's called, and Book of Life. These are incredible books by Deborah Harkness. I started the trilogy in... May, June for Unicorn Fan Book Club because A Discovery of Witches was the book we did for book club. But then I had to finish this the trilogy because I got wrapped up into the story. And I will admit, book two kind of lost me. It was not lost me, I enjoyed it, but I felt like it felt slow. So it took me a lot longer to get through it because I just wasn't as, like, you know when a book is like really kind of the pacing is fast, you kind of don't want to put it down. I didn't have that experience with book two. Um, so it took me a while to get through book two and then book, through, book three, Book of Life, I just, I mean, it was fast. Book three, book three was the book that I went through the quickest and it was so, so good. I finished all three. And so the TV portion of this is that I'm now watching A Discovery of Witches on Amazon Prime through Shudder. I don't know. It's a Canada thing, but I'm watching it now. I'm rewatching season one, which I had seen before I'd read the books. And it's so much better after you read the books. So I'm watching rewatching season one. I'm sure you'll hear more about that from me next month, but I am enjoying the heck out of it. And now for a few random things that I want to gush about. And then I will get onto decks and I have quite a few decks to talk about. So just come along with me for the ride. So in randoms, I mentioned that Peggy and I joined the local pool. So I have two pool favorites. This is probably not gonna be all that exciting to look at. Um, first of all, I am I went and bought new swimsuits, plural, because I felt like it. <laughs> so Peggy took me just, I think it was like right after my birthday actually, she took me to a local shop that had a great swimsuit selection. I got a cute little swim skirt and a cute little swim top. And then I got another cute little swim top and I may have a two piece on its way to me. Um, they're all two pieces, but I have a skimpier two piece. <laughs> which is a little bit nerve wracking, but I wanted something that would dry quicker if I ever have to just throw on clothes over a bathing suit and like go home. Anyway, uh, I have a skimpier yellow two piece coming to me from Amazon. I do, I'm a little dubious about that because I couldn't try it on. So we'll, we'll see on the yellow one. But um, as I've been relearning how to swim and just really enjoying my time in the pool, I've been getting accessories. I partly blame Marlena for getting me thinking about accessories, but actually it's just been happening very quickly because I'm having so much fun in the pool. First of these is a swim cap. I did not want to get a like latex swim cap because those things are so uncomfortable. And I know you can get silicone ones now, but they still can snag on your hair and I just, they can squeeze your head. And I just, I just, I just didn't want that. And I don't really, I don't need to keep my hair dry and I'm not trying to competitively swim. So I didn't need anything like that. But I found this swim cap on Amazon and it feels like, it almost looks like it's gonna be like a rubbery. It feels kind of like it's synthetic, whatever this is. Um, I'm not sure what the outside material is, uh, but this is by a company called Active Aqua and I will link this in the description box down below if you happen to swim, I guess. But this is really fun. I got it in pink because that's what was in stock and I wanted it right away. Like there was probably other colors, but like of the colors that weren't black that were in stock, the pink is the one that I wanted. So I grabbed this. It's working so well. This is fabric. So the inside is like, it's fabric, it's stretchy. It doesn't, you know, I wet my hair before I put these on anyways, just so that they'll stick better um, on my head, but it's comfortable. It doesn't squeeze like as tight as like a silicone one would or whatever. And so it's a favorite. I know it's probably a boring favorite, but it's fun for me. And the same company I actually found um, really, really nice swim goggles. These are amazing. So I had a pair of swim goggles from way back when, like the last time I swam, which was like honestly years ago. So these goggles, um, these are not like the goggles of yesteryear. Like the goggles I used to have growing up and the goggles that I had before were like these really, like they're small little cups and they like push into your eye socket and then they form a seal. They're really uncomfortable, but they do keep the water mostly out of your eyes, but also they were low quality and they were really, really, um, not foggy is not the right word. They were just really, really old and like they just dirty, I guess. Anyway, I, I'm babbling. I'm trying to get to the point. 
My old goggles were really uncomfortable. They were like push in and you couldn't see really good and they were pink. I didn't need them to be pink. I'm, I'm swimming in an indoor pool. So I got these ones. These are the same exact brand, that Active Aqua on Amazon. And these are crystal clear They you can sell, see. Like there's no tint to them. If you wanted to use them outside, you'd want to get ones that, that are tinted like sunglasses, right? But they don't go into your eye socket. They actually like, you know, they seal to your face. I know I'm trying on, whatever. But they are, really great. They're super comfortable by comparison and they seal really easily. Like I don't have to like shove them into my eyeballs or anything crazy. So these are also a favorite. And they came in a nice, with a nice case, which is convenient because then I can keep them nice in between swims. And the last random thing that I wanted to talk about this month was a really, 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 really exciting surprise gift that showed up. And I am so, so grateful for it. It arrived on the perfect day. It, somebody had sent me, blah, a really generous subscriber had sent something my way, had let me know it was on its way, and it felt like it took a long time, and then it got stuck like in customs or something for a bit. There was some fear it was lost. I had no idea what was in the package. I just had a tracking number. It eventually arrived like the day before my birthday or even the day of, I can't remember now, and it was perfect timing, obviously, and it was actually sent as a birthday gift, which made the fact that it took longer and ended up get, arriving closer to my birthday like extra awesome. It's already in um, my witchy grimoire book, but this is what it was. Oh, I'm so excited. So it's my first ever Leuch term night. What do you call these? Leuch term 1917s? Oh my gosh, you guys. Yeah. Leuch, Leuch term 1917. So it's basically a bullet journal, but uh, it was engraved. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. Tarot, unicorns, and self-worth. Seriously? Seriously? I was so excited and it's light pink and it's beautiful. So I strung it into this particular um, cover, which also has my um, little watercolor thing. And then it also has a grimoire book in here. And so these are living together as my like sort of witchy combination book that I'm still making some plans for how I'm gonna lay all this out. But this is a work in progress for sure. And having that gorgeous bullet journal to put in it just like, Oh, it's like literally like angels were singing. It was so perfect and I was so excited. Oh, oh, I forgot the rest of my, um, I know this is out of order, but I don't care. The rest of my store credit that I had, I actually got this gorgeous moonstone pendant. I'm hoping the light will catch the flash. Looks like it's catching it. It's hard to tell in the viewfinder. I'm like looking to check. Does it show up? I think it does. It's, yeah, it's really pretty. Uh, Moonstone was my original Feldspar love. I fell in love with Moonstone and had a Moonstone pendant for the longest time, but it was set with, um, in clay, like in a Fimo type setting, which was amazing because I'm allergic to metal. <laughs> but I had a bird at the time and the bird nibbled on the clay setting. So, um, yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> so it's all nibbled on. I still have the teardrop shaped moonstone, rainbow moonstone that was in that setting. And someday I will reset it or have it reset or something. But this was a very exciting find. It's little and it is delicate and it just hangs at the perfect spot and I love it. Okay, I think that's it for randoms. Can we, we're, we're gonna talk. Oh no, wait, 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 one more random. I got a Starbucks cup. These are always sold out. Like all the really pretty venti straw cups are always sold out when they come out. And I happened to be at a Starbucks on like the day that these came out and I got one and I was very excited. It's probably not the one that everybody else is excited about, but it's the one that's in my colors. So digging this like big time. All right, the time has come to talk decks. I worked with a lot of decks in July, so I'm just gonna start talking about them. Some of these you will have seen on the channel before, some you may not have. I'm trying to think. Actually, one for sure you definitely haven't. Let's get into it. So the first pairing that I worked with in July was the Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot. And I worked with this right beside the uh, Botanical Inspirations deck. Now I've had this deck for a long time by US Games. And this one is newer to my collection and these made an incredible pairing. So the Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot is really special. I wish, it wasn't one that, how do I describe this? It wasn't one that tempted me when it first came out because it does have, I don't know, an aesthetic that's not usually like, I guess my aesthetic for lack of a better way to express it. The cards are gorgeous. They're very, um, they feel a little bit isolated or lonely, lonely, aloneness. Um, they feel solitary. That's the word I'm looking for. They feel very solitary because even in cards where you would typically see more than one figure, you only ever see one. Um, but a lot of the titles in the major arcana have been changed in ways that I think are really super interesting. And this deck has this lovely, like gentle, 
nurturing energy and it feels intensely spiritual and magical. It just has a very, very different vibe than so many other decks. I feel like the deck that I own that most competes with this one would probably be the Enchanted Tarot, the 25th anniversary edition deck. It has a similar kind of vibe, like the Three of Swords going into the, the roses is a really beautiful depiction. There's a bunch of cards in here, I'm just looking for ones. The court, court system is renamed and redone, so we have the Nymph instead of the Page, and we have a Spirit instead of King. I think Queens are still Queens. I'm just looking for one here. Yeah, queens are still queens. Here's one of the queens, queen of wands. And yeah, I love meditation for the hanged man. So a lot of the, the reworking of the major is just really good. Yeah, and then the knights are warriors. So there's one of the knights. It's a really, really gorgeous deck. Look at these backings. Like, it's just like black starry night. It's gorgeous. So I had a, a lot of really, a lot of really fun. I had a lot of fun working with these um, in July. And I think they paired really, really well with Botanical Inspiration. So let me show you that one. But Botanical Inspirations, I feel like pairs well with so many things. It has a similar sort of, here's my Peggy bag match for the Night Goddess. I mean, could it be any more perfect? So yeah, that one's a lot of fun. And then the uh, Botanical Inspirations deck. So this is a US Games Mass Market Oracle. And it's based on the Victorian language of flowers, which I'm sure there's a name for that. I've never been fond of the backings. It says botanical inspirations on the back. But they're parchmenty colored and they've got the flowers and then a keyword and a really gorgeous quote on each card. And I love that about this deck. It just makes it really usable. And it again, it pairs very, very well with decks, in my opinion, that have like an older, more vintage look or decks that are like in an incongruous time period where you don't want to pair them with something like, you don't want to pair like a modern oracle maybe with like a not modern tarot, that sort of thing. So this tends to get a lot of use actually in my collection, despite the fact that um, all on its own, I don't know if it's one that I would have gone gaga for it, but it just makes such a beautiful pairing. This is the Peggy bag for it. Makes such a beautiful pairing with um, so many things that I end up getting a lot of use out of it. I don't pull it for clients a lot, but for my own work, it's just really lovely. The next deck combo that I worked with in July is the Cosmo, Cos, Cosmo Beings. I always want to say this one wrong. The Cosmo Being, Beings Tarot by Joanna Nelson, which is beautiful. You guys know I'm a big fan of the Mons Tarot, and this one is gorgeous. It's black and white with these pops of red. I will say that in real time practice, it... It didn't excite me as much as I wanted actually working with it. It was fun. <laughs> Look at these creatures, they're so cute. This is one that I'm a little bit on the fence about. It's not a surprise. I'm so, uh, this happens to me every time. I do like, it's different enough from Mons Tarot. This is from the same creator as the Mons Tarot. It's different enough from Mons Tarot that I feel like it has a place among my things. It's really cute. But I think I was hoping to feel like it was connecting me more to that cosmic energy. Love this Knight of Swords. And I don't really know energetically what I'm getting from it. I feel like I'm enjoying the artwork. I'm enjoying the universe that it's in. It's got great world building. So that part's all really good. But something about it is not, it's not hitting the way I was hoping it was going to hit. So I could see it being in danger in the future, possibly, but it will be a while because I really enjoy it. And again, I find that it's different enough. There's my Peggy bag match. I find that it's different enough from my Mons Tarot that it's not like with, when I had Whispering Spirits, that one felt like it directly competed. This doesn't, but also I'm still learning what this deck feels like to me, if that makes sense. So I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm ambivalent at the moment, but it is delightful. And I paired it with, and this is such a fun deck, the Affirmators Deluxe. Um, I've been a big fan of the Affirmators decks for a long, long time, and I had several of the individual Oracle decks. There were some like functional issues with those decks. The boxes that they come in have these like slide out bottoms that fall, like not fall apart, but they open if you pick them up. And I like to keep mine on a, on a uh, shelf. I don't keep this deck in a bag because I use aff Affirmation decks a little differently than I use all my other decks. But the Affirmators Deluxe took like the best cards from all of those other individual oracles and put them together. This one has like a hundred cards, I think. And it's in a really nice like wrap open up box. Um, and it has the same card stock, or at least it feels to me to be the same, possibly a little thicker. No, I think it's the same. It has the same card stock as the Affirmators Tarot. So if you're familiar with the Affirmators Tarot, so then this is the same. And so the Affirmators are wonderful. They're just wonderful. The humor on these cards, the ways that they offer you a little pick-me-up, a little boost, 
this is a wonderful, wonderful deck, and I really enjoy using it. I use, I enjoy using it for myself. I enjoy, enjoy pulling cards for clients. This is meaty. If you have, even I struggle to shuffle this, and I feel like I don't shuff, struggle with most bigger decks, but this one, it's, I have to split this up to shuffle it, and that's not normally something that I have to deal with, so be warned. It is big, um, but it feels incredibly durable. There's no book because, of course, your messages are right on the cards. So this came in and replaced all of my individual Affirmators Oracle decks. So those all moved out. This stays. I paired this with Cosmo, Cosmo Beings and I really, really enjoyed it. This next, this next combo, this next combo is going to get me in some trouble. Well, maybe. So I worked with my first edition Mons Tarot. This is, should not be a surprise. It was my birthday month. So for my birthday week, I worked with the Mons Tarot. This one has a special crystal that lives in it. This is an Atlantisite. Let's see if I can block the camera enough to show you one-handed. There we go. That's what that looks like. Um, my first edition Mons Tarot. You guys have seen this on the channel a bunch. This is my one and only favorite, favorite, favorite. Um, I love this deck so much. And this first edition's cardstock, partly because I feel like it's been shuffled so much, so it's softer. Um, but the cardstock in the first edition does, does feel different than the cardstock that Joanna is using now. It's a little bit bendier and it's just a little easier to shuffle in its big format. I did actually try working with the second edition. That's the edition that I was taking with me to work, but it's stiffer shuffle. And I, I've trimmed that one to be borderless, but I always go back to this one because it's so much easier to shuffle if I want the full size. I also have the travel, the travel size, um, but I really enjoyed working with the Monstero in July and I paired this... <laughs> Nobody yell at me. <laughs> I paired this with the Little Bug Oracle. So funny story. Uh, yes, I did anti-haul this. I did not back the Little Bug Oracle on Kickstarter. I was going to wait because I did not necessarily get along with all the keywords. And I was really worried this was going to not fit in with my relationship with the Monstero because the way that I use the Monstero hasn't historically been to pull it and pull oracle cards beside it and do all that kind of thing. But it is so cute and it's in the same world as Monstero. So like I knew it was probably an inevitability, inevit inevitability, but I was just like, I'm just gonna not be impulsive. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna see how I feel. I'm gonna wait for it to come out, see what, you know, watch some walkthroughs, you know, the usual like slow my roll kind of stuff. And then Joanna Nelson reached out and very, very kindly and generously offered to send this to me as a gift. And it arrived on my actual birthday, which was amazing. Now, I will admit that when I went through it, I fell in love a little bit, but I still had the same issue with the keywords or the titles on the cards, because there are more titles in a lot of places than keywords. So I modified this deck. <laughs> I sat down with the guidebook and with my own feelings and I went through every single card and I made a list of keywords that I felt like would work for each card, my own keywords, sometimes one, sometimes more than one. And I modified this deck to add those keywords and I used a um, Micron 05 black fine liner pen, which I found out is permanent ink. And it let me write the keywords in really small print and incorporate them into the artwork. And you'll see what I mean because I'm gonna show you some of the cards. So here is the peace card and I've written diplomacy and I put it under the peace sign here. For this one, which is um, adventure, I added invitation and confidence. So confidence is up here in this leaf and invitation is up here in this cloud. Oops, I'm covering the card with my hand. So I did that for the entire deck and it made it such, here I put the keywords in the stones. It made it such a usable deck for me to add my own keywords. So I added them on the mountainside and is this one only got the one? Yeah, this one's only got the one. So it says lean in and it's trust. So this one's more of a keyword, right? But then you have stuff like, like here on signs, I added a decision and confusion. Um, Swing, for example, swing is not a keyword. It's the name of an object. And I'm, I recognize that I'm incredibly picky and opinionated about keyword things. And it's a me thing, I get it. But I need not, like swings have very specific meaning to me. So I could have totally worked with this, but I like keywords on Oracle decks. So I added a very personal keyword to me on this one. I used the word escape because that's how, that's what a swing represents for me in a lot of ways. Here on gift, I added generosity. Uh, and I also added deserving. So deserving is on the present and generosity is underneath the present here. So I tried to sort of like work the keywords into the card in such a way that they wouldn't be obtrusive, right? So I added them on the book here 
and you can really doing this was such an exciting and fun mod to do because it made the deck mine in a specific way and it let me start working with the deck the way that I want to work with it and it it really it really kind of opened my eyes to what I could potentially do in future if I get if I really fall in love with an oracle deck that has titles not keywords or has keywords that I don't get or that don't make sense and I think I was partly inspired to do this with this one because of my modification of the Chicoli Oracle, which doesn't have any titles or keywords on it, and I wanted them, so I added them, right? And so this was just fun. And because the artwork's so bright, a black micron shows up almost anywhere on the card, which made it really easy to do this particular technique with. So that was a lot of fun, and I really, 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 really loved working with it next to the Monstero after I made my mod. And I've been really, really enjoying the heck out of this. So that's the Little Bug Oracle, and I'm so grateful to have received it and to have a chance to bond with it. And now it feels like a major boon. Boon? And now it feels totally at home in my collection. Speaking of collection, I'm gonna harken back to YouTube favorites for a moment, I just realized. So I went down this whole like identity crisis with the word collection. You guys probably saw that happening. I started to call it my library. I just liked the word better. And a lot of that is because I felt like the word collection meant something I keep and, and accumulate without using, without enjoying. And then Dawn Michelle made a really, really great video, in my opinion. I mean, I'm biased, Dawn's my friend, but I really enjoyed her take on this idea of like collections not a dirty word and she specifically talked about collections being something precious or treasured that you really really enjoy and I was like oh <laughs> oh yeah so I kind of went down this like rabbit hole I think it's really easy to get caught up in this stuff and like I had gotten very black and white in my thinking about what the word collection could mean or should mean and so I kept getting annoyed like well I'm not just collecting decks to have them I want to use them like that's the identifying or the, I guess the very specific trait I'm looking for in the decks that I have around me is I want them all to be things I want to use in real time. I don't want them to just be things that I'm holding on to because I think they're cool or they're pretty. I want them to be functional. And that functional piece made it feel like collection was the wrong word. And yet it's the word I've been using the whole time. And even in this video, I noticed myself, like when I talk about my makeup, I talk about my makeup collection. When I talk about my nail polish, I talk about my nail polish collection. Why did I suddenly have this big barrier about the word with tarot? I don't know, my nose is itchy. <laughs> um, so I don't know why I went, like kind of got overthinking it, but I think it's because there has been discussions that make it sound like collecting is bad. And I think Dawn addressed this topic really sensitively, but also really effectively. And I was like, yeah, I can call, you can call it whatever you want. And I think the word library is a really good word, but I'm such in the habit of calling it a collection and thinking of it as treasured things that I enjoy using made the word collection feel like it could take on the meaning that I guess it always had for me, but that I got confused about. Anyways, rabbit hole, bit of a side tangent for you there, but it was a really good video. So anyways, point is I will link Dawn's video down below so you can check it out if you're interested. But that's where the flip-flopping on collection, library collection has come from. So just so you know. So finally, the last X that I worked with in July was I pulled, nope, wait, no, before. Okay, so I also, in July, I worked with the Kawaii Tarot a, a fair amount. Like I sort of interspersed this around among other things I was working with. I've shown this on the channel before. It's really, really cute. It's not the best cardstock in the world. It's not the highest quality <laughs> deck in the world, but the artwork is adorable. This is what the backings look like. It is a little on the busy side, but it is so cute. It's so cute. And sometimes I like these busier decks for just, there's something that that does for my intuition sometimes. It feels like it gives me things I can chew on. And I think cute decks tend to be very minimalist and kind of like spacious in the artwork. And so this is a really fun contrast. I love all the colors. I just, I love all the characters and the activity. This is like the bone fire of adorable kawaii decks. If you know, you know but I had a lot of fun working with this one. So I worked with that, oops. I worked with that one a fair bit. Did I just like totally, okay, hold on. But yeah, I um, I really enjoyed working with Kawaii Tarot. I worked with it, I, I don't think I worked with it for an entire week. I think I worked with it around the time I was working with the Mons Tarot and just kind of flipped around between the both, probably during my birthday week, if I remember correctly. But anyways, last week of July, I had so much fun. I read with, I. For the first time in a very long time, I actually carried around a little selection of decks. So I had as my tarot deck, the teddy bear. This is the Peggy bag match, isn't that cute? 
cute piggyback match. Anyways, this is the, I think it's called the Wandering Teddy Bear Tarot or just the Teddy Bear Tarot. Uh, this is so freaking cute. So I covered this in a hot takes and had already bought it, I think by the time my hot takes was recorded. It's super darling. It doesn't shy away from the dark. This death card though is, can we just, is it not like the, hello, is it so cute? I freaking love this deck. This is so adorable. So this was one that I worked with. It's, it's, it's so cute, but it does have some, it has a pretty aggressive 10 of swords for a teddy bear tarot. Like it's like a bloody teddy bear. I love this temperance card though. Hello with the mixing and the alchemy. It's so freaking cute. I think I did a full walkthrough of this. Yes, I did. I will link that down below. But anyways, I really have enjoyed working with this. It is, it's adorable. It's adorable. It's cute. It reads really, really, really well. I, it, it's, it's just, it's a great deck. So I had a lot of fun reading with that. And then for the Oracle deck, I used the Roots and Wings. Well, I, I used two different Roots and Wings. So I started out actually using the Roots and Wings mini. So I'm ambivalent about the mini, actually. The, I think the main reason I'm keeping the mini is because if I ever want to travel with an Oracle deck, I feel like the only mini I would want of an Oracle would be the Roots and Wings because this, this deck reads so well with anything. It's so easy to use and I want an Oracle deck that I have for travel, but it's not that exciting to work with, in my opinion, cardstock wise. It almost feels, it feels just a little papery. It feels coreless. It's, no, it's definitely coreless. Yeah, it's definitely coreless, um, which is fine, whatever. It's It just feels a little flimsy in this mini version, but it isn't sticky because it's not the rose petal finish. So if you don't like the rose petal finish, this is can be really nice. And it looks great and it reads fine in a mini, but I was kind of dissatisfied with the cardstock. So plus I wasn't sure I needed the mini next to a full size tarot deck. So I packed this up and brought it home. And then I switched over to the full size, which lives in this peggy bag. And I've always loved the full-size Roots and Wings. It reads really, really well. And it paired really cute with the Wandering Teddy Bear Tarot. It just pairs well with lots of things. So I really enjoyed working with this. This is an, a tried and true Oracle deck for me. One of my very, very favorite ones ever. And it just works really well. It's very tarot-like. It's got lots of good cards and very balanced. Has some light and some dark and some neutral. And it just works. It works really good. So I had a lot of fun reading with that. And it was a good pairing for the Teddy Bear Tarot. That's it, y'all. Those are all of the things from July that I have to share with you today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. As always, an extra, extra big thank you to the Unicorn Fam. Thank you for your support of the channel. It means so much. If you are interested in joining the Unicorn Fam, you can click the Join button, which is usually around where the Subscribe button is. Or if you don't see that, then click the description box. I have a link there. And if you're still having trouble, try it from a computer because sometimes mobiles and the join button don't work. But I do like to do extra content for Unicorn Fan members. We do a lot of that kind of stuff throughout the month. So if you're interested, check that out. But again, as always, thank you to the Unicorn Fam and thank you to all of you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, doing all the things that you do to support what I do here. It means so much. Thank you all very, very much. And may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.